I'm Scott Brighthoff, your host, here at this exciting AFA Freestyle Masters Championship. With me, an expert on the subject, Ron Seven. Scott, we have a fantastic program for you today. Like the Olympics, we have the best freestylers in the world, both flatland and on ramp, and we're about ready to begin. So sit down and hang on tight for the Sacco Freestyle Masters Championship. Brought to you by Murray, Ride with the Winner, and Vision Streetwear, Built Street Cut. Ron, we're about to start with the Flatland Freestyle Finals. Uh, tell us the basic difference between Flatland and ramp competitions. About 20 feet of air, I'd say. Okay. Flatland Freestyle is obviously done on level ground. It's like gymnastics or dancing on a bicycle. Take that same kind of an idea, but take it 20 feet above the ground, and you have ramp work. And you're going to see some fantastic ramp riding today. All right, well, let's go down to our man in the pits, Lenny Baticki, talking with the head judge on what they're looking for. Before the pros really get underway, I've got a head scorer, Mark Patterson from Austin, Texas. Mark, you're the big guy with the AFA this weekend as far as uh, how things are set up. You know, tell us a little bit about the uh, judging. How many judges are there? Okay, in the pro class today, we're going to have seven judges, and uh, out of the seven judges, we're going to throw out the high and low score of the seven and average the five in the middle, and that's how we get the result. And that's uh, after their runs. And then what are the judges looking for on those runs? Okay, we're looking for difficulty, showmanship, variety, and things like that, you know, basically the overall impression is what we're going on, like how many times they may, the foot may slip off the bike, things like that. Any real special keys, some insight from uh, Mark Patterson on how to be an AFA uh, judge? <laughs> well, become an affiliate to start with and uh, work your way up from there. You having fun at it? Oh, it's great. It's uh, really tough doing these pros because they're all so good, but uh, we try to do a good job. Hey, Ron, the first of our three Flatland finalists is your friend and mine, R.L. Osborne. Scott, R.L. Wright, the general bicycle, he's a great guy, he's a super performer, and his chances today are great for a win. You know, uh, Lenny Baticki, our man in the pit, talked to R.L. earlier. Uh, I feel really good. I got a lot of new tricks going today. Um, got a really hot routine, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Who are you looking for as a competition? Well, everybody in the pro class, you know, of course. But, you know, Dennis and Martin are always be up there. They're the guys that I'm going against. But um, I got a lot of new tricks that nobody's seen today, and uh, brand new stuff, and I think it'll do it. If we were a judge, you were, you know, could talk right to us. Uh, what should we look for? Uh, consistency, uh, excitement, uh, difficulty of the tricks, uh, maybe a little bit of originality. You know, what's new and what's happening, like all the things you see. A little bit of trendiness too. That's always something you know to see the something to judge against. Um, basically, the whole all-around picture, excitement, and everything like that. Well, Ron, RL's first run is up. What should we be looking for? Okay, RL is the kind of performer that appeals to the crowd. He's, uh, oh, you'll see a hand wave, a smile to the crowd every once in a while. You'll see him using his back picks quite a bit, too, and the rotor, too. It helps him get around on his boomerangs. And you'll see uh, tail whips and all kinds of gyrations. Some fancy names. He makes it look awful easy. Uh, it's not easy. I'm sure that he practices just like the other riders for many, many hours each day. There's a little example of uh, there's a feeling to the crowd there. The smile, I guess he feels like he's doing a good job. Riding backwards. Let's see what he's going to go into now. It looks like he's setting up, looking where he's going. Taking a little bit, uh, a lot of time there to set up. Is that something the judge, judges take away for a Uh, depends. Like right now, he had to find the best location for this backwards rubber ride. And he's doing it real well, too. That's what he looks good for. Balancing strictly on the handle grips of the bicycle. Yeah, and he ran out of room there, that ramp got in the way. I don't know if the judges are going to take that into consideration because he had to touch down to get out of it. Swiveling now, looking pretty good. He seems to do a lot of tricks on his front wheel. Is that front wheel? Oh, he's all over the bike. You, take, you watch close, he'll be all over. Squeak in there. Oh, he had to touch down on that. I don't know if the judges are going to think about uh, touchdowns in this comp. Uh, there's some controversy as to whether that's important. Some of the riders feel it's not uh, something that should be taken into a major consideration. Touching down their feet and off the pedals of the peg. Right, right, right. right. That's a lot of boomerang type uh, tricks uh, and tail whips. RL's into fancy footwork too. Dennis McCoy kind of, I guess, introduced that to the, to the sport. All that fast footwork on the tires. And he combines it with all that rap talk. Yeah, he does. Yeah, there he is again. He looks like he's having a good time out there. 
The crowd seems to be behind him, too. That's uh, real important. I think the judges take that into consideration also, don't they? Well, they're not supposed to really be influenced by the crowd. And in some cases, uh, a hot routine may not be uh, the best routine in the way of execution and that kind of thing and difficulty. It may be that the rider's just a real showman and pulls the crowd. Wow, what do you call that trick, Ron? I've heard it called the time machine. R.L. calls it the Xerox machine because everyone's copying it. What a finish. R.L. Osborne. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I was a gold medal run if there ever was one for Elson. Thank you very much. It's dope, man. Holy stuff. My fingers hurt. <laughs> you have a lot of fun out there, huh? Oh, it's a blast, man. The crowd is killing it. These guys are getting into it. You know, that was so good. If we had a Russian judge, he'd have gave you a 10. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Well, you're just excellent out there, Arl. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Except for me. We've got some of Arl's fancy footwork on instant replay, Rod. Yeah, you know Scott Elsted as he's known, he's six feet tall, 165 pounds, but you'd never know it. He's light on his feet. He makes it look like he's dancing on his bike. What do these pros do when they're not competing? Okay, there are opportunities for pros after this exciting adventure that they go through each competition. Some of them go home and just kind of relax and kick back and practice thereafter, shortly thereafter. We also have riders that go out and do clinics for different organizations. We have riders that do shows for the manufacturer and for private organizations. There's plenty of opportunity for a pro if they want to get out there and hustle. All right. R.L. Osborne, a gold medal run if there ever was one for Elson. Thank you very much. It's dope, man. Holy oh, stuff. My fingers hurt. <laughs> you have a lot of fun out there, huh? Oh, it was a blast, man. The crowd was killing it. These guys are getting into it. You know, that was so good. If we had a Russian judge, he'd have gave you a 10. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Well, you're just excellent out there,